Greetings, ladies and gentlemen players. As you can see, we are here on my floor, though you take my word for that. And we are going over a real board game. Now, I also must confess, I looked at what we've been reviewing lately, and predominantly, predominantly, it's Shibano games. It's predominantly Shibano games. What can I tell you? He's been... Ah, oh, he's just been on everyone's hearts uh, lately, and oh my god, he's been on such a tear. He's um doing very, very well. Some of you might know he's going after his first title. But, and here's the thing that's kind of interesting. Ever since game four of that series, he's actually had to play quite a few games. I'm actually going over two games tonight that he's played after game four of his uh, title match. And let me just say, I know this is a complete spoiler, but he has been, oh my god, he has been popping off. Like, he's just been playing on a whole different level, I have to say. It's really amazing to watch Shibano, like, kind of going to the height of his strength. But I'm, I, I assume it's the height of his strength? I assume? I assume? I don't know. Unlike his opponent in that series, Mr. Cho Yu, haven't seen hide nor hair of him playing. Anywho, we have got uh, Maeda Ryo, uh, Ryoji. That is a that is a G, I assure you. As Black, professional seven down, also Japanese player versus everyone's current favorite player, Shibano Taramaru. And if you're sitting there thinking to yourself, Shibano is not my favorite player. Uh, well, you better just keep that to yourself right now. Now, this starts in the upper right-hand corner, and weirdly enough, we would normally see probably a 4-4, maybe a 3-4, but we see none of these things from the Seven Don Profesional. We, in fact, see a 3-3 opening. Now, right away, the first time I glance at this game, because I tend to like open up like a bunch of tabs, of all the games that are currently playing, and then I just like look to see which ones are interesting. And immediately this one popped out as interesting because I saw someone opening up with the 3-3 three, three point. I'm like, oh, hey, this is a game I might want to go over. And it wasn't until after I realized like going into the game that it was also a Shibano game. So that was kind of like a lucky coincidence. Thought I'd share that with you. But yeah, 3-3. Three, three. All right, all right, all right. Clearly, this is probably someone who either likes bleep blooping and taking three three points, or he's just like had it with everyone taking his. Hard to say which is which. White takes four full points. Black goes double three three against Shibano Tormaru. While White is saying, you know what, it's fine. Four fours are good. <sighs> the Real Brapple says my favorite player is Daniel ML001, which you can find on Twitch at twitch.tv slash Daniel ML001. That's true. He's a pretty good player. I will respect that choice as well. But this is interesting. We have three three openings here, which suggests that we're going to be playing, we're in a like a territorial game, right? And Shibano is obviously opening up four four points saying, you know what? Rumor has it I'm pretty good at the whole influence thing. So I don't really feel compelled to like take three fours to make sure I get territory. Like, uh, yeah, fine. Three territory, territory versus influence, territory versus influence. Fine. Fantastic. Black approaches. And as you would imagine, white backs off. We don't really pincer here because very few variations are actually good when you pincer the approach. Like you pincer here, he takes your corner, you gave him territory for no reason. We have that influence facing this way for what reason? It's 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 okay to do, I guess, technically, but in my opinion, it's harder to use, so not surprising we're not seeing the pincer off the 4-4. Also not surprised, Black immediately hits that wonderful attachment. This is now very, very common Jiseki nowadays. 
So no one can really complain or be surprised that this is what's being seen. Only question is, how is white going to handle it? There are a couple of interesting variations nowadays. White Hanes, that part is completely normal. Uh, not a lot of variations with this part. Like you've gotta, you've gotta do this. We're not gonna play here, for example, and just let our opponent slide into our corner easily. We're not gonna play away and let our opponent Hane. So yeah, this part pretty unavoidable. Black responds with a Hane in turn. This saying, if you ignore me now, I will tar you to way in ways that you will never imagine. And of course, White's going to respond. But how White's going to respond is kind of up in the air right now. Because we could play here. This is one response that we tend to see. Followed by the Tiger Mouth, the Push, and then Sente for Black. This is, this is actually... Uh, I learned this the hard way in one of my games. This is actually Sente for Black now. Even if we pincer it, we're probably not going to be able to kill it. We can Atari it and then like poke here, but we're probably not going to kill it. In fact, often, uh, often cases, you can be pincered here, ignore this, and you still can't be killed here as Black. It's, it's just one of those things. Uh, don't try to attack this too hard. This thing is, is pretty resilient, sadly. So that's one option. Other options are more common, which is the Atari, which is what we see here, followed by the attachment, or the connect, sorry. And then last but not least, Zihane. Now this means that black is going to be Atari, as to connect up his stones, makes perfect sense. Right? I'm going to go into Tari. And then Black's going to be like, well, I don't want to be... Uh, or White's going to be like, I don't want you killing my stone. So I'm... I'm going to connect. At which point... We have an extend. Now, it would be remiss of me if I did not spell out the danger of this particular Jiseki. We could end it here and play away, and many of you probably have seen it ended here and played away. Right? You probably you probably seen that. This is painful for white. Black is very happy. Well, the upside of this is if we wanted influence, we do have influence. But your corner is not yours anymore. It's black's. Because there's no move you can play to ensure you can literally get center territory. So the corner's his, but it's second line, so it's not very much, but he is out and not surrounded. But the, uh, but the flip side of that is white has sente. That's, that's the benefit of this. Like, he is low, he does have sente. Unfortunately... If white allows black to play here later, which often case is going to happen, then this turns into a bit of a third line territorial corner for your opponent while they're also on the outside. The flip side of that though, the benefit is somewhere else, we got to play two moves elsewhere. One for this move here, we're playing away because this move is Gote. And then one after here because this move is Gote too. So the upside of this is Sente twice. Upside of this is Sente twice. Uh, black rather go up. Not necessarily going to happen later on in the game. Later on in the game I'm referring to, that this is here and it's going to be kind of large. Like we wouldn't play this immediately. Obviously there are large moves to play elsewhere. Including the turn. But later on this is hanging around. Right? That's all I'm saying. So it's a small corner now, but it might be large in the future if black gets to kill the one stone. Now, here's something that's interesting. We have to go over it for a while. White pushes. And black plays the Hane. 
Now at this stage, we have to ask ourselves, is that a valid move from Black? Is that something that Black can just do? And if Black can do it, does that mean we're going to Hane here? And allow Black to keep extending? Is this, is this the fate that we are destined to endure? Having our corner potentially stolen, our one stone potentially killed, and giving territory on the third, the second, third, and now fourth line to our opponent? That is a little bit much. C16 is endgame. C16... Um... I wouldn't really call it endgame. It's usually taken before then, because it's worth a lot of points. I really wouldn't call it particularly endgame. It's, it's close to endgame. But once you take this, that's like 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 points you've secured for yourself. Plus, you've gotten rid of more for him. But you shouldn't be like throwing 10 points like back and forth in endgame. Something's usually going wrong if you're making that many exchanges. This is more uh, mid to late mid-game, I would say. But yeah, this one now, question mark, what do we do about it? Well, we can't Hane because that's insane. Giving your opponent fourth line territory after having stolen our corner is just not acceptable, clearly. So White cuts. Brave, brave Sir White. Even if you are the most passive player in the history of passive players and don't like fighting, sooner or later you will meet opponents who just try to get away with too much. They just try to get away with too much. If you let them get away with it, ooh, you're gonna be uh you're gonna be having a rough time. You're gonna be having a rough time. So here we go. Now there's a few variations that aren't going to be played. We are not going to Atari this down. Now that is a hard decision to make. It looks like it's fine, right? But check this out. If we Atari down, our opponent saves, obviously, because he's not, he's not giving us the stone. That's crazy. Black saves. White turns. And now from here, I actually tell you what, let's Atari here first. And then we'll turn. And now from here, we have choices to make. We could do this, in which case white's going to do this. And then you've got to go back and live immediately, which is gote. So white would get to extend. At this point, I don't think you want to be black this game, right? That was a terrible result for white. Or er, black. Blah, 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 blah. Terrible result for black. Stones are weak and cut off. This for group for white is getting stronger. This thing has to live in Gote. It's just not good. So we're not going to connect. So we're going to play here. And white's going to extend. And I guess we're going to extend again. And again. Now this looks like it's actually not bad, right? I mean, we've got, as black, we can, think our, we can say to ourselves, dude, we've got white running on second line. But mind you, one, two, three, four, five liberties, one, two, three, four, five liberties, plus one because we have to extend, so six liberties. So this is almost a problem. This is now a problem. We cannot respond here again. We have to go back and live, which means is that a good result for black? Having to go back and live here, white gets to Hane because we're threatening to, like, kill things. Actually, no, we might not... 
make this exchange until afterwards because we do have this one still, right? Yeah, we might do this one. Yeah, avoid this exchange until after this. So yeah, this is not a good result for, for black because he's being rolled up into a little ball here, right? White's going to be able to push and probably even surround this corner. So then surrounded corner, surrounded corner with a group under attack in the middle of the board. Even though we ran on the second line because black had to go back and not die here, it would make this a bad result. So we're not going to Atari down. And we're tarrying over. So I wanted to point that out because later on in the game, you might have said, oh, well, this is just stupid because he shouldn't have Atari this way to begin with. He should have Atari down and just killed the one stone. So we had to go over this so we know um, why this variation is seeming a little bit slack for black. You might, you might say. You might say. So all right. Same thing here. We save. This is now alive, so we can play over here. Uh, comments. Ooh, this is the stuff I assume pros don't do. White seems to have fun, have a fun game in this DDK's eyes. I'm confused. What do you assume pros don't do? I'm I'm really confused there, Riek Baduk. What is it that uh, you think pros don't do? Also, little note while I'm waiting for his response, I do like the lighting today. Because the white and the black stones, I think I've got them really popping this time. I'm a fan. I pat me on the back. Continuing while we wait for his response. White extends to as to, you know, not die. Black continues to chase. And white continues to extend. Oh, the double hane. Well, yeah, because it's it's a proverbial, right? It's a double hane that had a two and three stones. In that variation, we had like clear capture, so we could double hane. They don't double hane uh, needlessly, right? But if you try to get too aggressive in an area where their double hane is just going to kill you, yeah, they'll do it, right? Like, if you just, like, cut here and, like, tried to push off and not worry about the liberty count here, then, you know, one of the, one of these groups of stones would have died in that variation. So they do it when they're very aware of the result they're getting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, right, we have pushing, 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 and then... Um, I got this right? I do got this right. I don't got this right. Oh, sorry. Wait. Push one more time. My bad. Because it would have been bad, right? Because then we would have just been like, okay, fine. I'll just turn here. Fine. Whatever. Who cares, you know? That would be the Hane that had a three stones again. So we extend one more time. And then we got this one. There we go. So this looks like we are having a little bit of a problem here. But here is one of the reasons why I love this game. Right now, I'm kind of on this kick where I love games that show shape. So many people, um, either students or people I'm playing against online or my own games, let's be real. Like we, we always have trouble with shape. It's like, oh, we should have poked at that shape. What the heck does that mean? Oh, we should have made better shape. What 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 does that mean? So I'm like really into uh, games right now that just show players going out of their way to make shape or going out of their way to poke their opponent's shape to keep them heavy. Because those little things just wind up paying for themselves over and over and over and over and over again during a game. And if you don't see them, ooh, so so tough. 
Like, not getting your shape exploited when you needed to protect it means, heck, for one brief moment in time, shape didn't matter in a game ago. Can't find out way to exploit your opponents? Same thing. So, we turn. Now, Black's group has to be a little bit careful. But it's jumping. I think the idea here is this group is fine, this black one, because black wants shape in the middle of the board since he's clearly playing a territorial uh, kind of game, right? So he's trying to force his opponent, take his extra points, forcing his opponent to make him influence in the end shape in the middle of the board. Let's see how that works out for him. This next move is amazingly brave, and I would not play it in a hundred years. Never in a hundred years. Because that would be like my first obvious question, right? What if my opponent jumps up? Like, what... I... What am I gonna... I don't know what's... What um... What 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 But truthfully... There is Aji here, as well as the ability to still come out. It's harder to kill this group than you might think at first glance. That said, Black says he's going to make the attempt. And White says, okay. Now what? Black plays a move many of you have seen before. Hani on the inside of this one, because we're trying to Atari and connect on this one, right? But, you know, good old shibby cakes. He, he, he knows these tricks. He says no. Not gonna happen. Can't you cut the one space jump with the stones on both sides? Usually you need iron pillars on one, at least one side. Otherwise, your Atari will end up poking into the other side. And you just have to like, let that happen if you're going to cut, right? So, all right, we have here. So far, it looks like a nice attack for profit. White Atari's to come out. Which is making this side heavier again. Black gets to connect. White asks, can I cut you? Very nice timing. White, er, get, uh, blah, blah. Black answers, no, he can't. So only then does white defend. If black had st uh, instead said, no, I'm going to like maybe like Atari and connect over you, then white could have cut through and like settled here while his opponent got the influence. So nice little asking move. Nice little asking move. It's all right. Black then says, Clamp. Those stones ain't looking that great. Is an R8 Sentai for white now? Wait, R8. R18. Oh. Uh, uh, uh. Well, we couldn't play it before. Because after this was connected, this could Atari and connect up in Sente, which forces this probably to live in Gote. And then we just go back and deal with the corner, right? With a lot of influence staring at us. That would be kind of bad, you know? So now we play here, and White says, I think you forgot about something. I think you forgot about something like, oh no, oh no, the corner, heaven forbid the corner. But this shape is now extremely heavy, and White's now weirdly enough getting influence on the outside of the board. Because... White forced Black to commit to killing these two stones. Uh, 
Time to leave. And White says, no, you don't. I'm gonna follow you. This move is kind of nice because we're threatening this one. Right? You can see that this stone just suddenly starts surrounding all the things. Right, right, right? So black does not want that to happen. So he's trying to escape. Now, I probably would have Hanade on top without really thinking about it. Because I'm not a very good player. I would have been like, yeah, I'm just going to get outside profit. Like, I don't, have to, I don't have to do anything more aggressive here, right? Yeah, just, just surround, get the outside profit. We're fine. Fantastic. But White asked himself, can I get some more? By honey on the inside, can I create more cutting points? So he is much more aggressive. Instead, two cutting points have been created. White connects. Black is forced to make some shape. Defense cutting point. And at that point, we get... Take the other one. Vast, vast difference between the Hane over and going under like that. Because now there's no time to save the stone, right? If we save the stone, this is completely surrounded. So this group up for white is fine, right? There's no way to surround this group. It's got like eyes and shape and stuff. So this is just going to get completely surrounded. And is, is this even going to live at that point for black? So we can't do that. We have to give up the stone instead. And, whoops, wrong, wrong stone. And take. Uh, whatever. The left side is becoming a bit weak, though. Um, not really. Like, if we look at the shape, we have this shape here. That's immediately, right? That's immediate. We've also got this here for some stability. We can still come out. I mean, we seem to be okay. But to be fair, Black has the same idea that you do there, uh, Nizrayan. Because Black goes back and says, isn't your left side becoming a little bit weak there, buddy? So, and this is very, very important, White extends the Doomed Stone in order to get better shape. Black takes. White plays the Atari. Black takes. And just like that, We are suddenly much better off, aren't we? However, 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 big however, black still has pokey points. So he got to play them in Sente. Pokey point number one. Can I cut three? Making the shape heavy. Pokey point number two. Can I cut through you and kill off your stones? And Black says, uh oh. Houston, we are having a problem here. Now, rather than go for some kind of crazy cut right now, making himself stronger.
making an eye shape and connecting. And then defending. So white has shape now. We've made black a clump. Looks like a pretty good result so far for white. I mean, for shape to be heavy, it means that it's hard to find ways to make like, since you have like a, a, a lot of stones doing very little. It's not making shape very easily. It's not making like point very easily. Like these stones here, for example. What are these five stones doing? They're not making shape. You can't see shape there. They're certainly not making territory. They're not really attacking anything. There's like a bunch of stones just like being a weight on the board. Right? It's just kind of there, just sinking everything down. So, all right, we're turning because we can't be attacked anymore, but hey, free point. Whoops, is that the right point? Yeah, it is. Sorry, looked weird on my monitor. Black has to make painful choices. He's like, I need to make shape here or something. I don't even know. This is not a problem. Uh, if we get cut now, we Atari connect Atari. So we're fine. And black jumps out because I mean, he can't do anything else, which means, oh man, so painful. Easy points for white. Like right now, I would say that what we're doing over in here and this lovely little stuff that we got in the middle right here is definitely uh, paying for itself. I mean, it's worth this, right? Seems like it's worth that. We seem like we're doing fine, yo. But Black says, okay, that's enough is enough. My group here is completely fine. Time to pick up some points. Oh, yeah. The game will go on. And you can like audibly hear white sigh at this point, I would like to say and be like, okay. Are you alive here, sir? Excuse me. Excuse me, sir. Are, are, are you alive? Like right now? Black's like, yes, I'm alive because I am out. And White's like, uh-huh. Oh, yeah, you're out. Oh, yeah, you're out. Yeah, yeah, uh-huh. And Black says, I'm still out. And good old Shibano's like, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Uh, you're out, you're out, yep. Excuse me while I keep attacking you for profit. Like, we're not trying to kill anything here. White's not, I don't think White, White's not trying to kill him. He's just, he's just sitting back saying, you know what? He's going to show me where my points are. I'm just going to punch him around a little while, and uh, he'll show me my points. I love making points this way. I absolutely love making points this way. Not like the gote take like an enclosure in the middle of the game to even out like the disastrous crap that's been going on previously. I really like the, oh yeah, I'm just going to like attack you for a profit. Right? Because this is, this, is this is a clear example of it. One person taking profit in Gote, another person is profiting by attacking. Right? Ah, oh, I love Shibby's play lately. So nice, so nice. Black's like, okay, enough, enough's enough. I'm alive. This is now, this cut now kills. But White's like, you know, if you're alive, those two stones don't mean jack. So where do we play our next move? Where's the next move, chat? Where are we going to play the next move? 
Where is it going to be? White's next move. Q4. What's Q4? Q... Oh, God. You're aggressive. You want to play way up here? Yikes. Yikes, 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 yikes. Q10, split? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Easy. Easy. Yeah, easy decision. Where is Black's win condition? Well, right now, he's not attacking the he's not attacking the middle of the board. He's not attacking the left of the board. There's a 3-3 up there, but eh, it's not really all that weak. So what can he do? He can't attack, therefore he has to grow. Got it. Where can he grow? And the answer to that is the right side of the board. Black needs stuff like this in order to come to like really do something in the game. So, easy split, easiest split you've ever played. Black, push, push, push. And I want you to take note of the board right now, because I don't think anyone's going to be able to predict what's going to happen next. And because you can't predict what's going to happen next, when you see it, oh, you're going to fall in love with Shibano if you haven't already done so. You will absolutely. So, all right. We need a base first. So, we get this. Get a base, get a base, get a base. Black says, I'm going to keep you low. It's like, well, that's rude, but okay. Cute defense, threatening to revive his two stones. You have to be careful about this one, because this one tends to leave Aji behind, right? But here we can play it because it has greater value. It's threatening this thing, right? Ordinarily, we wouldn't play this move for our base. Because of what it leaves behind. But here, yeah, only because we have the second value. Only because we have the second value. Black, on the other hand, is like, do not care what you try to do. I'm going to take your 3-3. To be fair, if white gets the entire upper left-hand side into the left-hand part of the board, I mean, he just wins the game, right? He has to. Like, we can't look down on him for that. He has to live there or he loses the game. So, all right. Do, 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 just gonna live. Do, 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 just gonna live. Nice strong moves. Just gonna live. Ah, my stone. I threw it across the room. How'd that happen? And then uh, connects. And then save. Okay. Okay. So this is pretty solidly white now. Like the hole here is just like meh. Meh. So yeah, he's fine. Um, Isn't W stronger now? Um, He's fine, remember? We have Mei. We've got like... This little guy here, which solidly kills its U-stones. And if white fixes that in Gote, we've got, like, stones over in here to get under eye as well. Right? So we're okay. We're okay. We've got, uh, we've got, we've got two things. Is it left only 25 points? Um, I don't know. I'll take your word for it. I didn't count it. This is what? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 times 3? Hmm. Sounds about 25-ish. But Comey. So it's 31, right? Plus whatever we have here, our base there. Uh, question is where does black have 31 points? So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Question mark. These stones aren't dead yet. Because this will save them. 
So we can count this for territory, this for territory, and something up here for territory right now. This is a question mark. We don't really know. Seems fine. White seems to be in a good position. Has to live if white gets that point and black's dead locally. But that's Gote, sorry. So white says, right, what next? Well, it would appear that black is attempting to get a large upper right hand side of the board. Therefore, This move is amazing. Look at all the things it's threatening right now. It's threatening, you know, the simple disconnect of this stone right here. It's threatening to go in. It can still come out. It can do so many different things. It slices, it dices, it bakes you a pizza in under five minutes. How does it do that? I don't even know. But yes, this thing is amazing. So, black defends, nice and strong, and white says, kick. Um, actually, we've always played that against, we don't, like, see a lot of 3-3 three, three stuff, so it's easy to forget, but that's, yeah, that's just normal shape. Been around for a long time there, sir. Black drops down. And then white's like, I'm out. What are you doing now? What are you going to do now? Your one stone's looking a little bad. Do-da, do-da. But it is okay, because remember, I mentioned the shape point from earlier, right? So we go here. Boop. And we draw back. Off the board. There we go. Boop. And we're going to connect because there's a cutting point there. So, donk into connection and donk. That's why I mentioned, you know, it's kind of troubling sometimes to play this diagonal because it leaves the stuff there, right? So, all right, let's follow up. Easy peasy follow up. Save stones, connect under, because we don't want him dropping down and disconnecting us, that'd be terrible. Also terrible, getting cut, so we're turning. Got it, got it, got it. Black pokey pokey pokes. Don't want to get killed, killed, killed. And. Takes away both eye shape and, you know, kind of protects. A lovely cutting point. Tries to keep white, or sorry, black, isolated in the corner. And black says, oh, time to take more points. Time for me to take more points. Oh, yeah. Look at me taking my points. Now, this game is one of the wonderful games of Shibano, and for many of you. Because we've always gotten to see one player, I won't name who, who's kind of leaving some weak stuff behind. And it's been on one player to figure out what to do about that. We saw that in the middle of the board, and we're seeing it again now. It seems like there's a group that's not 100% in the middle of the board, on the right-hand side, right? So what do we do about that? We have two fundamental choices. Choice number one is just by something like this and take center stones. Take center territory, rather. 
Oops. That's certainly a choice. But it is not Shibby Cake's choice. Oh, no, 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 no. Shibby Cake says, you aren't looking very alive here, sir. How about that? Black drops down. White extends up. Looking like we're having a problem. Now we gotta run. So there's running. And threaten to cut through. And shape sheepies. Trying to get shape. Trying not to be dead. And poke. And connect. This next part, however, is super cool. Because rather than keep throwing your stones against this middle group, we are defending and making ourselves stronger first. It's like, hey, can I lean against you to make sure my groups are nice and strong? And Black says, Atari. Now, this is such a strange Atari, I don't know what to say. It looks like a time suji. It looks like a time suji. White says, hey, what an interesting movie you just made. Can I cut you? And Black says, no. So White says, hey, what an interesting move you just made. Can I kill your stones? And Black says, no. No, I don't think so. Row spaghetti -os. Black kills the two stones. Which means that is now Atari. Nice and solid connection too, mind you. Black takes. At which point White connects. Ooh, that hurt so much. The time Suji, it was supposed to be safe. Ah, so sad. So sad. We've all been there, right? We've all been there, haven't we? It's like, yeah, the time Suji is all it is is now it's a it's a co to cut off, right? So, all right, are we alive here? Black says I can push. And White says, Nyet. Because he is secret Russian operative. And we push. And we block. Got to try to cut, because maybe this group and this group are in trouble. White plays the guitar. -y. Black extends. White protects his shape on top because we just turn. It's not a problem. Threatens. Offers a lovely little peace treaty. This move is amazing too. Black right now can live with some of it by playing here. But white takes off the potential for an eye shape and goes for solid profit. Black says no joy. So white says... What does white say? Everyone should know... Well, not everyone. DDK has probably missed this one. Single digits probably see it. Dons definitely do. Yeah. I think it's hard for a DDK to see this one. I think that's not one that's typically, uh, it's not typically a move that's on DDK radar, I don't think. 
but it works because of this stone here. Because obviously if black plays here, white can play here, and then when we take, that's a false eye, right? And if we don't do that, and after the throw in, we extend, then white extends, and then if we extend again, we get to connect up because of this one stone. And if we Hane, we get to cut that off. And then when these are taken, then we get to throw in, which gets taken, at which point we get to Atari, which is filled. So that doesn't get to live. So after this move, black is dead in the middle of the board. Now, to be fair, black can try to co for life on this one, but be honest, what's the chances? Even if, even if it succeeds, it's too big. This area here is way larger than this. So yeah, good old Shibano attacked for profit while his opponent was playing away and trying to take, you know, points in Gote. And he got a nice side over here, got a bunch of influence over here. Fantastic. His opponent then left a questionable group to take more territory here. And he did the exact same thing, only instead of attacking for profit, which we could have done in the middle, he flat out decided to kill the fool. So I love this game. It had wonderful ways to like poke its shape to make his opponent heavy, so he did have to run, so he could profit while attacking, right? I mean, without those heavy, those uh, pokey points, easier to locally, and yeah. <laughs> if you didn't see T11 do the Cho Elementary set, it drills that shape repeatedly. Oh, okay. Yeah, I keep hearing, I hear a lot of good things about the Cho Elementary set. Mm -hmm. I've gone over it a couple of, um, once or twice, not all the way, but yeah. So this is one example of where Cho has just been, or not Cho, lol. Why you got me to say it? Where Shibano's been on an absolute tear lately. He is just completely top of his game. 